Good day everyone, this is Miss Maggie. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about another important lesson in research and these are your conceptual and theoretical framework. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, click that subscribe button now as well as the notification bell to be updated with my educational vlogs. Although most of my vlogs now are related to research, I also plan to do some vlogs about psychology related topics as well as those in communication. But if you have a request related to any of your studies, I may be able to do a vlog on that explaining them to you guys. A conceptual or theoretical framework of a study can be likened to a foundation of a building. Just like a foundation of a building that provides support to the entire structure, your theoretical or your conceptual framework will also do the same to your research. Specifically, it explains the direction of your research, it makes research more meaningful, as well as it illustrates the expected findings of your study. Beginners in research are often confused which one to use. Should it be conceptual or theoretical framework? Maybe you're also in the same boat. You might be also confused which one to use in your study. So if I were you, stay tuned so that you will know whether your study needs a conceptual or theoretical framework. Literature seem to have a different take about what a conceptual framework is all about, but they seem to all agree that the following are the purposes of a conceptual framework. Number one, it presents the arguments of the study. It also identifies the variables and how they connect or relate to one another. And it helps generate the research problem or questions methods of the research, as well as guide the explanation of the findings of the study. Just like a conceptual framework, a theoretical framework also provides the arguments of the study and how the variables are connected to one another. However, this one is based on an existing theory. Theoretical framework introduces to readers the theory that explains how the problem was generated and at the same time present the assumptions of the research, which is of course based on a theory. Let's talk more about the differences between conceptual and theoretical framework. When you talk about theoretical framework of a research, it explains the general connection of variables, while the conceptual framework talks about specific connection of these variables. Let's say you're going to use Bandura social learning theory, which says individuals learn by observing the behaviors of others. In your theoretical framework, you explain how behaviors of role models affect individuals' behavior. But in your conceptual framework, you make this more specific by saying Having highly regarded friends that are bullies will more likely turn a child into a bully too. The reason why I used the bullying example again is because I want to be consistent with my other vlogs that use this as an example. So which one should you use? Should you use a conceptual or theoretical framework? Well, if your purpose is to make some generalizations about a specific phenomenon and you have an existing theory that is relevant to your research to back up your, your arguments, then by all means, use a theoretical framework. However, if you're doing an exploratory study where you're not sure about what to expect from your variables, then use a conceptual framework. Probably, a conceptual framework is more appropriate for the purposes of your research. Conceptual frameworks are often used in qualitative research in the social sciences because a theory cannot fully grasp the phenomena being studied. However, for those research 
that wants to um, generalize to a bigger population when they want to test a theory or an existing an existing um, generalizations, then usually they use a theoretical framework. Before we go into how to present your conceptual or theoretical framework, I'd like you to remember that these frameworks are not competing frameworks. You cannot say one is better than the other. In fact, you can use both in your research. The only thing that hinders you from choosing a theoretical framework is the existence of irrelevant theory. Now that you know about what a conceptual or theoretical framework is all about, it's high time to talk about how to present them in your research paper. There are actually two ways on how you can present them to your readers. One is narrative. As the name implies, you're simply narrating about the key concepts or variables in your research and how they relate to one another. Another one is through a graphic representation, just like the one that I have on the right side of this slide. With a graphic representation, you are simply using images to um, show to your readers the relationship of your variables. However, my advice is to do both. Do a narrative and a graphic representation of the uh, relationship or connection of your research variables to one another so that your readers may understand this part very well. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. I hope that you learned something from this lesson. If you have any questions or clarifications, you may send me a direct message to my Gmail account, which you can find on my channel. If you have suggestions on what topic to talk about next time, feel free to also send me a direct message. Bye-bye and see you next time.